we're going to continue our video series on the interaction of pure data with Serato and tonight I thought it'd be fun to talk about how to build your own super knobs and um, it'll look something like this as you can see I've got the SP6 sample player open the first three volume knobs are all the way down the second three are all the way up so we're going, we're going to make a sort of crossfade effect like that I'm just moving one knob now I know that it seems a little bit redundant to think about building your own super knobs in Serato when the DJ effects have their own super knobs that you can assign three effects to, but it's really more about just learning how to take control of your own performances and doing what you want to do as opposed to having to wait for software updates from the company. So um, this is something that can also be useful inside of the uh, video SL plug in if you would like, but I'm going to leave that closed just for CPU considerations right now. So we'll talk about how to use it within the, the SP6, but again, this is something that could be used um, anywhere where there's um, MIDI knobs and sliders and so forth. So our own super knobs. Let's talk about how to make that appears in the MPD24 again, and then make sure output is going where you want it to go. In this case, it'll be Serato Scratch Live MIDI in. So that looks okay. And of course, you want to make sure that your um, knobs and sliders or whatever it is that you want to control from pure data are MIDI mapped. So if, uh, you need to see my video on how to MIDI map everything using only two knobs uh, from a pure data patch. So all of these are mapped. And then go to MIDI and make sure that your MIDI controller is disabled. And so MIDI values are not going directly to Serato, they're going to Pure Data and then, then to Serato. Okay, so let's bring over our PD Canvas. And the first thing that we'll want to do is start a control in object, so that's C-T-L-I-N. And you can um, set a creation argument to limit only the control values that you want. So the knob that, or the slider that I'm moving on the MPD24 is continuous control one. And then we'll go control three to set up two number atoms just so we can see some values here. Of course on the Mac that's um, command three. So when I'm moving the slider here you can see the MIDI values on the left. And then this stands for channel two. So this is continuous control one, MIDI values over here on the left and a channel two. Okay, so like we did in the pitched cue points video that I made, we're going to set up a control out object, so it's C-T-L-O-U-T. It's got three inlets, and I think it'd be fun to set up a GUI object called the horizontal slider, that's command shift three, or you can set up an object and put H slider, like that. Now, by default, the properties of the horizontal and vertical sliders are 0 to 127, which makes them very handy for MIDI use. But if you go into properties, of course, you can adjust any of those values as you need to. So if you only wanted one to go to 100, um, you can set that up very easily. So here's the left and there's the right. And so let's go from the control value to the inlet of the horizontal slider. And then we'll go to the left inlet of the control out, and that's just giving us some control values. So if we go over here and take a look at what our MIDI mappings are, so this first volume slider is on channel seven, continuous control one. So we want to set up a message object, that's command two, put in the number one. And so every time numbers come in here, it's gonna bang that message and then set up another uh, message object, command two, with the number seven in it, which stands for MIDI channel seven. Okay, I'll go ahead and close that other patch so we're not uh, having any interference there, so okay. 
So you see that the volume slider is working over there on the left. And so all we have to do is repeat this process for any of the other controls that we want to be able to move. And so that's continuous control three on channel seven, as you can see. So I just need to change that. And we're moving both. You see, one thing I forgot to mention is that if you highlight your coding in pure data and then hit command D or control D, that will duplicate your work. So it makes it much easier. So continuous control four on channel seven. Now we're, con now we're uh, controlling all three of the left volume sliders of the SP6. So now we want one to go in reverse, and this object over here that I brought over can be very handy for that. So let's duplicate our work one more time, but go ahead and disconnect that slider from the control in object, and let's move in this object. So that's an expression object, and that's EXPR space 127, which is the stands for the MIDI values, minus dollar sign F1. And let's connect that here. And that will reverse whatever's coming in from the control in object. Very, very handy. So if I move this around, it'll show you here. So this is 127. Notice the, uh, it's opposite here, so this is something that just reverses whatever comes in. Let me just duplicate that one more time. So continuous control 7. Now this slider is on MIDI channel 8, continuous control 1. So we'd need to change that. And let's see how that works. Yeah, so our work has been duplicated. So see what you come up with, and um, I hope you find these videos helpful. I know that they've really um, helped me expand my creativity within um, the already expansive environment of Serato, but um, this is something that is, once you get the hang of, is fairly easy and simple to do, as you can see, using pure data, and the options really are just absolutely limitless. So let me know what you come up with, and um, of course, as always, subscribe and rate and everything else, but comment back if I can answer any questions, and um, we'll see you next time.